Hello, everybody. Oh, a thrown rock. Just, uh, just stuns. That's okay. Right. Welcome to the first round World Cup match between Mr. Marvel and Arza Wayne. Uh, they're both PS4 qualifiers. Mr. Marvel doesn't really play Champs Ladder. He won the Old World Bowl, which is how he qualified. Arza Wayne plays lots of Champs Ladder. Um, 76 win rate. He's won it four times on P PS4. And he qualified... He was one of the two people who qualified through the Invitational Cup. Um, Arza Wayne won the toss and chose to receive. He's gone with humans and the absolutely standard choice that people went with humans, which is 12 players, three rerolls and an apo, and three guard, block ogre and a mighty blow tackler. I would personally like more guard. I, I don't really like the block pick on the ogre, um, but I can, you know, I I expected people to take block ogres, even though I personally don't like them. And. Uh, Mr. Marvel has just gone three rerolls, no apo. He has gone with only one runner, which is very risky. I don't really like that. Two, two slayers. He's gone mighty blow on a blitzer rather than mighty blow on a long beard or a troll slayer, and he's gone guard on the long beards rather than the blitzers. So he's basically built this about as differently as he could from how I would build it. Which means that I don't like it, and I favour Arzawain to win, as well as his champs ladder pedigree. But, um, this doesn't mean that he's wrong and I'm right, of course not. <laughs> um, everyone who qualified on PS4 got a free copy of Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition so that they could play this on PC. Um, also, some of the people who qualified um, via Champs Ladder and stuff, they don't necessarily have uh, Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition, so some PC players got Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition as well. Um, so yeah, they, they're not playing on... They might be playing on controls. I think you can play on a controller, can't you? Even on PC, so... They could well be playing on controllers. <laughs> I would just like guard. I would, I would have, I would have had more guard. I would have used my my double as guard on a catcher, because not only do I like more guard anyway, um, you could then then you the build the team building later rounds is just much better when you have blodge guard catchers and a guard ogre, and you know it just it just works better I think, not re not using a double on the ogre. Long term, I think, is is better, and probably round one as well. I really don't like because the block ogre just makes you want to punch things with him, and then he bone heads, and you feel bad. Yes, there's a bit of a meme, uh, you know, about in you know having a go at consoles, but it's just it's just it's just it's just banter. Obviously, the uh, you know everyone's good coaches are good coaches, no matter what format, whether it's whether it's PC or Xbox or PS4 or Fumble or tabletop. I think the. You know, it's pretty similar standard everywhere at the top end. Not really... I'm not really a fan of this kind of elf stall with agility three teams. Wow, double skull. Block not helping him there. Um, I mean, it does make it harder to uphill the ogre. He could surf this guy, couldn't he? I'm sure. I'm sure... I would have, uh, I would have, I would have thought about trying to surf him there. Surely, surely there was a way to surf this guy. And when I say a way, I mean an, an easy way, not a stupid way. <laughs>
But you know, failing surfing him, I like using the guard to, obviously to not frenzy trap himself. This is looking pretty grim for the humans, isn't it? That, that double skull. And a KO. So someone in someone in uh, in chat saying if a player doesn't have a record in CCL he must be shit. That is absolutely not the case, uh, Cornai. Because wow, it's a huge cars. Apple works. See, that's why I like the Apple rather than the uh, Reserve. You know, you can't you can't your Reserve. It can't be a guard blitzer. And um, there's quite a few people that mostly play in leagues, but they they could play somewhere else, couldn't they? You know, if someone if someone could play a lot on Fumble but only play in a league on Blood Bowl too. Um, and there is somebody in DBBL who doesn't play champs and he's a very good coach. So no, that's that's not true. Alright, so he still looks like this guy still looks very surfable to me. I mean it might take a little bit risky dice rolls, but this was a hard one to protect and he's managed it because this guy's threatening a bit. I like I like the way Arza, Arza Wayne protected the ball here, but um, oh, it's easy surf, isn't it? Oh no, the ogre's in the way. The ogre's in the way, but you could make two dice on the ogre and then blitz him, chain him, surf him. I, I would have gone for surfing the uh, mighty blow guy this turn. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he could have done it. As it happened, I mean, you, you would kind of have to deal with the ogre to uh, to be able to get the surf. So it wasn't it wasn't really so easy. The problem is not really getting a blitz that's worthwhile, isn't it? Is the thing. Just repos taking the heat off is interesting. I'm not sure about that. But he does want people behind the ball, so that, that, it's fine. I'm certainly not saying he was wrong. But I think Alda maybe he's wanted to keep pushing. Keep the, oh wow, one dice. I think maybe he's wanting to keep the pressure on and give him the man advantage. Huge stun as well. Huge double stun. That is, that is incredible. No, I just didn't have it. I, I, right, so Cornite said that's not your opinion. You felt it was implied the way I said one coach had a 76% CCL and the other didn't play, so I backed the 76. Well, when you've got some information on one hand and no information on the other, you know, <laughs> that, that's it, isn't it? 76% is one of the highest win rates that anybody has got in Champs Ladder. You know, that is, there are 13 people in this tournament that have a win rate of over 70%. I don't know how many have a win rate of over 75%, but I'm guessing it's like three or four. So, um, so you know, when someone's got that higher record, in that higher win rate in Champs Ladder, um, versus somebody who, who you don't have information about, I think that naturally, you know, you, it's, it's just limited information. I'm not saying that he's crap at all. That is a ludicrous thing to it to, to conclusion to come to core night. Um, I was just saying I have information about one coach and no information about the other. So obviously I'm gonna back you know <laughs> you're obviously gonna back that person you've got information to be good. I mean the this the, the champs ladder rates don't mean a, don't mean a whole lot. But um but still it's better to have information than not have information, isn't it? Wow, another Kaz. So he's lost three players this drive, the humans, yet somehow he's not really under that grave pressure, is he? But he, he's, he's got everything in front. But I think... I don't like... These guys are quite out of position, aren't they? These guys are quite out of position. He should have tried to get someone. But then he's got to cover a bit, because he could break the other way. That, it's just the weakness of dwarves being so slow, really, isn't it? Huge handoff there. 
and a bit of a potato. Reroll's gone, so time for the biggest dodge of his life. Makes it. And another one. Disgusting. Poor old dwarves here. Eh? All that. And uh, they've just got, I don't know, one, two, three, four. That's really rough, isn't it? Uh, they, they've, they, they basically over pursued at the end of the day, I guess. They should have had more. Somehow, they, they should have done something different. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know what it Get is. Fucked, you little cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, not no. saying that they've played really badly or anything, but they just there must have been some better play somewhere, must not they, to have not got themselves into this spot. So it's it's not a slight on a, it's not a slight on Mr. Marvel at all, but because I don't know what the what how they should have positioned, but they should have done something differently. Just from how just from where they are. <laughs> Rerolls the first GFI, and this was huge. I think he has to make this GFI. I just think he has to, and he doesn't. And the next dice he rolls is a two. Which leads to <laughs> the runner getting badly hurt and essentially losing the game. <laughs> and I can see why I didn't, but I just think you've got to. I think you've got to, got to GFI there. Um, and I mean, obviously, horribly unlucky, horribly unlucky to fail the dodge there and, and get cast. But I think you know. I think I think he should have had a second runner or, or an apple really. Yeah, that's it. Maybe, he should, maybe he should have had the extra runner. I mean, I, I like the extra runner even as a reserve. Oh my god, another cast! I like the extra runner even as a reserve, just because you know it lets you two turn more easily. And if you're down players, you'd rather have more movement and more agility. So I'm all for having. A, wow, he's rolling, he's rolling some cubes now, isn't he, hours away? Um, I mean, I think he did really well to have this weird, this weird elf stall thing work for him somehow and he did a nice move to protect the ball back there and obviously he did the he did the right play to get ahead of i guess the critical dodges though i mean he had to roll three three pluses and he made them all with the help of reroll and this is why i just i couldn't live with that with humans you know so if there's only one player here which is a four plus to one dice the ball um and in my opinion that's the only play you can make but Mr. Marvel does not make that play. He goes for a two dice and a mark and then double skulls. But you know, the mark is really unexciting because he just blocks him, assists and two dice blitzes with a reroll. So I think basing was, wasn't was really the right play. But nevertheless, he was still unlucky at double skull and, and not have it do anything. So yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a killer for the dwarves, isn't it? You know, there was a time there when they were they were three men up, and now they're starting the second half. Oh well, no, maybe maybe down because there's a second. It's currently ten versus ten. But if this if this uh, lineman comes back, they're going to start outnumbered in the second half after having such a huge advantage at one point in the drive. But they just couldn't they couldn't close it out, could they? And I guess that's credit to Arza Wayne, um, or maybe Mr. Marvel will be kicking himself. But uh, I, I, you know I, I don't know what I would have done that situation. I don't know what the best player you know if there was a supercomputer that was perfect at blue ball. I don't know what it would have done, but. You know, it is what it is, isn't it? He's he's got to feel like he could have done something, but who knows what it was? And a throne rock, another throne rock is another Kaz dwarf. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> uh, 
At least he gets the, uh, the KO there. Obviously no one turn attempt. Not, not probably not possible with ten players. They were, it was a tight LOS though, so he could have gambled on a. You know, he's got a frenzy. He didn't even backline it for some reason. Uh, I guess in case of a riot, but it's only like a few squares different. I think Arzwain should have absolutely backlined it, and I think Mr. Marvel should have absolutely tried for a one turn, as as tiny as the odds may have been with ten players. Obviously reduced to nine. I guess you can argue that going for attrition is worth it. It is very low chances with dwarves. But still, oh, and he didn't have a movement six player. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm saying all that to me. <laughs> His runner's gone. So, yeah, there's no way he could have got the one turn. <laughs> um, I like dwarves, so this is a really balanced commentary. <laughs> but... <laughs> Good, he couldn't even do it. No, that was his fault though, he should have had two runners, shouldn't he? But yeah, he couldn't have possibly made the one turner. Maybe with a quick snap. With a quick snap and frenzy, maybe he could have made a one turner. Um, but yeah, he should have just gone for the hits. Tutor. Tutor, his runner being dead. And him basically having lost already. And this is this is super hard now, but the 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 uh, the chaos didn't come back for the humans, so it is nine versus nine. It's just that he's outguarded by one, outmighty globe by one, outmovemented by loads, and he's only got essentially one agility three player on his team. Well, that certainly helped with his not having a runner anymore, didn't it? But still, it's just, it's like, you know, humans get stuck because they're agility 3, and dwarves are agility 2, so they really get stuck, so it is going to be tricky for the dwarves, for sure. They'd much rather have 11 versus 11 than 9 versus 9. Absolutely, they need those players to, to you know, protect the ball and everything. making too much of the win rate it's not the it doesn't make mean make, mean much but it, it just gives a bit of background to who the people are doesn't it and and how they play and stuff uh, you know if, if people play a lot there was one guy uh Pupok, i think has played 1900 games on champs ladder so you know he plays a lot of stuff and you know yeah the win rate doesn't really doesn't really make that much this is because people are talking about it in chat for the for the benefit of youtube you know, I'm not trying to make a big deal about the champs ladder win, win rate. It's just, it's just something that gives you a bit of a clue, doesn't it? Um, you know, there's so many factors that go into it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean a whole lot. But you know, somebody with a 70% win rate is probably better than someone with a 30% win rate, depending on sample size, of course. And knowing somebody has an 80% win rate compared to somebody who doesn't play in champs, it, you know, it, it gives you more information than, than nothing. So this is, this is a bit, I mean, what, what, what else can you do? It's a, it's a tricky drive for the orcs. The orcs, the dwarves. Double skull. I mean, was that worth a reroll? Was it even worth making the block? Maybe not. Yeah, 
this is this is definitely tough for the dwarves. The tough really don't want to have nine versus nine on offense. Don't want to on defense either, do they? Because <laughs> there's just more space on the pitch, so there's, it's easier for the humans to use the movement, isn't it? Wow, a Kaz. Another Kaz for the dwarves. <laughs> now they're down to eight. <laughs> now it's starting to. Now it's starting to get to dicing on kind of levels, isn't it? Does not support your assertion. <laughs> Three words. Shut up, cunt. <laughs> kind of nice guy would say that. <laughs> yeah, it's really. It's, it, this is just a nightmare for the. Uh, nightmare for the dwarves, though, isn't it? I don't even know. I haven't got a clue what I would try to do here. This is just well, I do know what I'd do. I would have had an I would have had another runner. But <laughs> it's uh even then, even if even if there was another runner on the pitch, it's just it's just horrible, isn't it? There's really not much you can do at all. Completely unprotected ball. Um, if he's smart, he can get a two dice into another two dice. Let's see. Let's see if he does that. Mm. Oh no, maybe he couldn't actually. No, maybe he couldn't. Maybe he couldn't get a two dice into a two dice actually. I didn't. I didn't see that the two guards were there. So yeah, he, he doesn't. He doesn't get the follow-up hit, but he does get a mighty blow hit and gets a KO. Thanks to mighty blow, and he gets the short hands recovery. And that's pretty much game, isn't it? There really. <laughs> Five dwarves removed. Um, goodbye, Armour 9. Yeah, there, there was nothing, there was not, nothing the dwarves could really do this half. Um, like, maybe they could have played it differently to start with, but... They were certainly uh, trapped pretty early, weren't they? Down more and more players. There weren't really any any good moves they could do. Obviously, like it, you know. In in reality, Arzawain would probably be like, you know, don't let this slip. <laughs> he'd be trying, you know, he'd be still be thinking about it. But when you're watching it, you kind of think it's over, don't you? But I'm sure he'd be, he'd be focused and trying to make sure he didn't give any silly, any silly hits on the ball and stuff. But realistically, it's uh, it's pretty much done now, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is pretty much, pretty much game over. A skull, I mean, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing to critique now, is there? This is, this is just both, uh, both teams passing turns effectively. There's nothing really, nothing really going to happen. Maybe you could roll a skull and die, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't matter. That 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 last one doesn't matter at all uh, because it was already over. <laughs> Funny though. Funny and uh, 
Arza Wayne gets to say he wins 2 0 rather than 1 0, but. Yeah, congrats to him. He certainly had the dice to to back it up, didn't he? I'm, I'm not sure about the the kind of elf stall that he did. Uh, maybe, you know, on another day he could have failed some dodges that, that was, you know. But then he he did get bad luck in the first half. He, he, he did get a lot of guys removed on his own drive, which made it tricky. So, you know, credit to him for for getting through that. And, uh, yeah. And it, and it is a game of two halves. As as lucky as lucky as Arzawain got with like the the Kaz, the Kaz from the dwarf dodge, and then the then the block, and then the uh, then the thrown rock that like completely swung the game. Those three Kaz in like two turns completely killed the game for uh, for Mr. Marvel. Before that, um, Mr. Marvel had had the better of the luck, you know, and he was getting out bashing his own drive Arzawain. So a lesser player. Would have would have maybe conceded on on their own drive as the humans. And that's the thing, you know, just because just you know, like Spartaco versus Al Bundy, the first game, you know, ev everyone thought that was a dicing, you know, everyone thought Spartaco got diced, but there's still plenty of people if they were in Al Bundy's shoes wouldn't have won the game, so. You know, it's it's not taking anything away from people when you say somebody was unlucky, but obviously, obviously, Arzawain was definitely lucky here to make this many cast on dwarves. That's outrageous. Um, but then you also can't say it wasn't deserved because, you know, it just it, it, they they they're not they're not one doesn't necessarily, you know, imply the other, does it? Well, maybe some people do get the implication, but I'd never imply. That someone has only won because they got lucky, but you know, if somebody gets lucky, you can't. You know, I just observe the fact that they got lucky. <laughs> you can tell the desperate, the desperation to fill the time in here. Uh, yes, I am, Drick. Yeah. I would have uphilled the uh, ogre just for a chance of another cast to make it to make it look like I got diced harder. said the right, I made it clear that the right in my game was incredibly lucky. Might have still scored the one turn, might have still won in overtime, but the right was clearly incredibly lucky, wasn't it? And, and that, that swing towards the end, the, uh, the runner, the runner dodge failed. Like, you know, the, the dwarf, the, the human coach had to make a handoff a three plus handoff and two three plus dodges to, to make the screen. And then the dwarf coach had to make one three plus dodge to pressure it. And he failed and got cast. <laughs> oh, sorry, he had to make a GFI. He had to make a, a two plus and a three plus to pressure it. And he failed one, had, he failed a two plus, had to use the reroll. And then he failed a three plus and died from it. So, you know, that was such a huge swing there. If it, you know, if, it could have gone a lot differently with a few different dice. But then the throne rock and the other cars just unbelievable. He did, he did, he was basically kind of the look kind of decided it in a way. But on the other hand, props props to Arzawain for sure to for winning. I'm not saying he didn't play better, just that anybody would have found it difficult after that swing. Uh, six AV breaks and made like five cars. <laughs> <laughs> Five cars and a KO from six AV breaks. Right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.